<laughs> anyway, the growers have put this out, and I'm sure Representative Shanklin has seen it, but I just heard from George Pratt that the U.S. Geological Survey, you were talking about it, uh, it's, it's imminent, it's going to be published soon. And the reason I think this is important, uh, I've been told, have you personally gotten a copy of this? Not that I know of. Okay. I don't I'm remember. told is that this is to be sent to all representatives and senators. Okay. And that other document should be sent to all representatives and senators as well. Uh, we need to get the science uh, well represented. Uh, the concern was expressed at a meeting just prior to this that um, science would not be well represented. In other words, this, this would get into the hands of the legislators and bias their thinking. So it, it appears that that publication is imminent, and I was pleased to hear that. Okay. Who put it together? That's a good you? question. Well, U.S. Uh, Geological Survey and University of Wisconsin Extension. Explain this one, too. This yeah, one. Yeah. Well, there's no offer. Oh, oh, this? Are we talking this? Yes. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah. It has no author. It has no citation. It has no citation. Okay. It's got a background note. The uh, Vegetable Growers Association put that together. And their present or whatever uh, lined up county board meetings throughout county. And they, and they did. Correct me the rest of you guys probably know. They did one at uh, Wapaka County and they did one at Adams. Our reps were there for the one at Adams and they presented this book and basically, as, as it's already been mentioned, there is no science behind the book. It's just speculation on a lot of the stuff. And that was brought up in front of the in front of the Adams County Board. And specifically what happened is the board then questioned the president who was there. And, and said, how dare you bring this in on a venue that you don't want any, I, I, and I, does anybody know the, the wording of that that, that heard this? The, 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 they don't want to have irrational with one word in it, and they don't remember the other, uh, a water legislation passed. That's why they wanted to go uh, grassroots to the county board with it, okay? The county board in Adams said, get out of here. They basically, he said, well, can I defend myself? They said, no, you can go over it. How dare you present this to our group, you know, claiming that this is science and it's not. It's just. There was an article in the Wisconsin Records uh, paper, and I don't know points up there, yes. but it was on the last Yeah. And I saw that. So, so and that, that, that's this what they're talking that, about. Where black is, black is white, up <laughs> or down, and the sand pumps, pumps it in there. It supports the growers. You're right. Yes. Right. Yes. right. Yes. Who the hand was trying to push that? Yeah. Who the hand was trying to push that? I don't know. I have a very limited amount of time, so I think what I'd like to do is have everyone just tell me who they are, where they're from, and what their main concern is, just so that everyone in the room can get their voice heard, if that's all right, and then whatever remaining time um, is left, we can go through, but I'm happy to follow up. And then were you able to circulate the sign-in sheet so I have people? Oh, sorry, I forgot the pop, that's all right. Okay, just go grab it quick so I can, I have a, a list that I keep when bills come up, whether they're good or bad. You know, I send my interpretation, I send information that I have, I send memo there, request. Um, and so if you want me on that and contact me, we'll just get your information and can communicate that way too. So we'll start over here with Bill and just let me know what your main concern is. And if everyone could take about a minute, I think, well, I can I'm not going to time you. Uh, it's okay to be passionate, but I just want to make sure we all, everyone gets a chance to talk. So. Okay, well, my name is Bill Seymour. I live in the village of Clover and I live adjacent to the little Clover and it started drying up in 2005. And the, the history we have on that river is that it never dried up before 2005. Even during drought, it never dried up. And after all the George Kraft studies, it is related to the high capacity wells. Another thing in the village is our village is looking to Stevens Point for its water, its municipal water now, because our water has so much nitrates in it 
you know, it's above what you're supposed to be drinking. And I think there's also with nitrates, if that's the thing you're testing for, there's probably a lot of other agricultural chemicals like pesticides and herbicides that are in there too. That's just a lot more expensive to test for, and the village doesn't routinely test for those. But, so that's why I'm here. I'm just really concerned about our water. Um, I'm Pete Arnson. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, hosting us. I'm a hydrogeologist and I do groundwater investigations. I am uh, currently working on an ordinance for Portage County, a groundwater quality ordinance. And I'm working on a groundwater monitoring plan for the town of Hull. Um, I live in Stevens Point. I work in Amherst. I own land in Stockton. So I'm uh, familiar across the county. And um, just one comment about what was brought up about the hearing that that book, Portage County, when it went through the county board, the same thing. We had a bunch of people, a bunch of scientists saying, you know, this is garbage, this is misleading, this is in fact wrong in a lot of aspects to it. But um, going back to my work with the county and the town, there's concern with water, but these municipalities aren't sure that they can do anything about it. They've had their powers limited essentially by the state, they think. And so they're coming up with ways, mechanisms where they can do something locally. And so this is part of that process. There may be a way that the citizens of a town or a county can vote to grant authority to the town or county to do things with environmental concerns. But it's a process I'm not familiar with, I'm just learning about. But there is that movement going on. Thanks. I'm Rita Eisenhower. I'm uh, from Amherst, Wisconsin. Uh, Lake Emily, we have a uh, lot of friends in Lake Emily uh, on board for that. And we just recently joined the coalition for the Central Sands. So uh, a few years ago when we were meeting on uh, Lake Emily, trying to come up with some ideas of keeping it healthy, et cetera, we felt very much we were on our own and trying to um, solve problems without any kind of coordination. And now I'm, it's just so exciting to see that people are looking at this as a whole. Um, I'm Celia Chauvin. I live in Amherst. I'm just a concerned citizen. Um, I want to make sure that our state recognizes the importance of groundwater. And let's get the legislation on that. I'm Edge Bishop. I live in the town of Hall. I live on the Plover River. My children live, and my grandchildren live in Lowell. Um, I was a special education teacher for three years. So beyond one of the things we haven't talked about is public health. And I, so for me, it is water quantity, of course, because without the water, none of the rest of us is going to matter. But it is also water quality. I'm Mary Jo Catton from also Amherst Junction, also live on Lake Emily. Um, so I live on the water, uh, use water for recreation, teaching, kayaking, have our own private wells, so we're concerned about the overall health of the water and pretty um, pretty disturbed about the about what we're hearing that's happening in, in uh, Saratoga and Rome and uh, it just seems wrong, wrong, wrong. Continue. I'm Kathy Grisitis from Stevens Point. I guess just when I turn on the tap there, our water is so good. And I'm aware of what's happening with the high capacity wells. And I know that the um, DNR has kind of been hamstrung um, from trying to regulate the, the high capacity wells so that the water is used in a sustainable way. So that's why I'm here. Feel free to have a seat at the table, too. There's a number of our seating rooms. So. Okay, great. Thanks. We're Tom and Cindy Fredo. Uh, we live just east of Clover near the headwaters of the Clover River, so we're quite concerned about that. We have our own well, which does have nitrates in it. Uh, Tom's brother mm -hmm. lives on the infamous Long Lake in Plainfield mm -hmm. and cannot enjoy that anymore. So. The high capacity wells and all these issues are very important to us. 
I'm Bob Brush. Uh, my wife and I are in Stevens Point now, but we have it in Florida. And we've always been aware that there's a problem with pollution in the groundwater and the pollution by the fraud uh, largely through high capacity wells. But I never felt that I was anywhere near, uh, I think there was any chance to overcome this or correct this. And I'm really glad to see so many people coming to the board to uh, do something about it. It's going to be a long haul, I know, but I think we have to make a start. And I think we're all looking for an environmental champion that will uh, <coughs> carry the flag for us. I'm Ned Grosnickel. I am a retired limnologist from UW Marathon County. I live on Mount Bay. Uh, there's a bill in the Senate right now, and there's no such bill in, in the Assembly, but I'm hoping that they have a similar one. I'm hoping that maybe you or someone else might be able to promote one like Senate Bill 20, the Miller-Mason bill. And um, there's a copy of it here if you need one. I, I just have this one, but um, anyway, uh, we're promoting that bill, and it's a significant improvement in many ways. The subheadings are groundwater management areas, um, planning, high capacity wells, environmental review of proposed high capacity wells, and uh, high capacity wells in groundwater management areas, fees for certain withdrawals, and so on. So um, I, I would like to see a similar bill uh, come up in the assembly to Senate Bill 20. Thank you very much, and thank you for listening to us today. I've had my show. Would, would you like this copy? I have it. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. My name is Dan Farrow, and uh, I live in the town of Saratoga. Uh, in uh, 1983, I built my own house. I put down my own well in 2018, so I had water from 21. In 83, Cullion came in and said, we have no, we can't find any problem. We can't sell you anything. She had very good water. The water was set to death. It was set when my daughter was born. It was set when my son was born. It was just set to in the last six months. There are no nitrates to speak of in my water. Within the, the uh, proposal for the mega farm that's supposed to go in, there are three high capacity wells within a mile and a quarter, one within one third mile of my own. Of my own. I know without a doubt, science tells us that when they open up, I will lose water. All right? And that could be three years down the road, but I'm going to lose my water. That means I have to drill a deeper well. All right. I'll drill a deeper well, I'll get, I'll get water again, and I'm going to turn it over to my wife because she can tell you other concerns. Okay, well, and one of the other concerns is um, the quality of the water. Because you can drill a well, but since there's going to be deforestation behind the house with all the manure spreading, all of those nitrates, phosphorus, everything that's in the manure is going to filter through our sand area and go right into our water supply. And so even if we drill a deeper well, it, it's only a short term measure. Uh, we can put in osmosis, a reverse osmosis system in. However, that will only take us uh, till our nitrate level hits 40 parts per million and then it's no longer effective. So basically within a short period of time, we will not have drinkable water. And so this is certainly uh, my concern as well as my husband's, uh, the water quantity and the water quality. And I may add one other thing. When we were talking to uh, Representative Krug this morning, I challenged him with, I wanted 